What's going on my super fam? How are you guys loving Tower of Fantasy so far? I'm loving the game. I've been playing and hopping on stream since yesterday. And believe it or not, I myself don't actually feel the game is too much of a Genshin clone. It is a very fun experience in of itself. Now after I've already basically grind the game for two whole days, I've managed to list out the top 10 tips I think that everyone should know before you get into Tower of Fantasy or if even if you've already played the game, you will probably still miss some of these tips. And so to save you guys time, I've already consolidated all of that into this very short quick guide video so that it is easy to consume. And with that, let's just hop into the first one. Number one is the character designs. Now everyone have access to character designs and we also have access to a lot of different designs from everyone in the community. Though I know sometimes it's actually quite tempting to rush your character creation and just get into the game. Game, I do really recommend you to think twice before finalizing your character creation because you know what you can't actually change it for free later on. You can change the outfit and some accessory for free however if you want to recustomize the body parts or changing the clothing color there will be a cost and at first you have a free ticket to do so but later on it will be basically a hundred primo gems every time you want to fix. So if you're someone who's serious about character creation like I do then make sure you really like your character design before you finalize it. Number two is that the banner of Tower of Fantasy is kind of similar to Genshin Impact in that we do have the standard banner and then the limited banner. However, here's the huge difference from my experience in this playthrough is that the free rewards you're getting most of the time will only be to pull on the standard banner. And from all the time I've spent in the game, I have never got the nucleus to pull on the limited banner and every Every time I want to pull on the limited banner, I have to convert that from Primo Gems. I can't remember what the Primo Gems in Tower of Fantasy is called, so I'll just note that as Primo Gems. So the Primos here in this game is just so very important, I'd say a lot more important than in Genshin Impact. Because if you're interested in getting a character from the limited banner, the only thing you can do is to convert from Primo Gems and pull on the banner. Number three is the Infinite War Climb. If you've already played a little bit of the game, you would definitely know how insanely stamina consumption world climbing actually is. And especially the first region of the game has a lot of mountain to climb and it just sucks out your stamina like insanely quick. Which is why it is very important for all of us to know the infinite world climbing tips. And that is you can basically utilize the double jump that Tower of Fantasy actually gives us. So how you do is that you first double jump and then press W to hold on to the wall. And then after that, you press Ctrl to release of the wall. And then at that instance, you double jump again and press W. And from there, you just repeat the process. This is pretty easy, but it does take a little bit of time to practice as first. I believe it should be the same on mobile. I don't know the exact button on mobile, but it should apply the same thing. Fourth is to fully utilize the map. Unlike Genshin Impact guys, where we almost never get to see any chest located on the map. Tower of Fantasy, however, do list out most of the chests that are on the map which makes exploration a lot easier so make sure to pay attention to the map while you're exploring and then mark down the chest location so that it leads you directly to the chest area now fifth one is probably going to be optional as more going to be like player preference and that is you don't have to force decipher all the time i would say that most of the time if you do run out of decipher code then you just leave the password chest there and then wait until you have the decipher code again and then come back and and then unlock it because deciphering these chests allows you to grab a lot more rewards i've already tested force decipher and the amount of rewards i get is basically a lot less so i don't really feel that's actually worth it for you to force decipher and then just save the chest there until you have the more decipher code now this is kind of optional because these chests do respond so many could say that even if you force decipher you can always have the chance to decipher them again next time they respond but for me, I'll just leave them there and then decipher them the next time I walk across them when I adventure. Number six is to always have fire weapon. This is so important guys. Fire weapon at an early games or at least till this point in time where we play is just pretty overpowered because most of the monsters that we came across don't have resistance against fire. So that first of all is already effective while we play the game. But not only that, a lot of the puzzle or the chest that gives 
gives us black nucleus requires us to use fire weapon and then you actually come across a lot of those during world travel so you always want to spare a slot for fire weapon otherwise you would always have to go back into your weapon inventory and swap them out number seven is utilize relic sets i know that at the start of the game you may not pay too much attention to relics however it is very handy and it's also very easy to use because you have the relic sets you have up to three sets and there is a hot key for you to press which is the g key on your keyboard and then you can instantly switch to your next set using that usually i have a set for my overworld travel and i have a set to deal damage and the only thing you need to do is just press g and then you can already easily switch so be sure to set it up and utilize it to its maximum extent number eight is the selection box in your backpack i am sure you will come across quite a lot of the selection box and a lot of the time the games does prompt you to actually open it earlier on however most of the time you don't have to do this and it is more important for you to actually save the box until you know what is needed or what that you are missing so that you can choose correctly otherwise you're just basically wasting your chance of opening an item that you would really need later on so don't make the mistake like me and open a lot of the box already until you realize that you can actually save them guys number nine is to utilize aerial attacks now aerial attacks in tower fantasy deals the most damage out of all attacks in your weapon skill so this is kind of important to know in order to maximize your damage however do keep in mind that it's going to be quite hard to actually spam this because you can't always air dodge so your chance of taking damage from attacks is pretty high therefore it is very important to also become very familiarized with the weapon that you are using as weapon in tower for fantasy do have a lot more combo that we can chain more than genshin impact and it's very fun to play as well and therefore number 10 is that i would say that tower for fantasy you basically do not need to spend anything because unlike genshin impact tower of fantasy do not emphasize on character selection but it is more on weapon i'm sure you already know the character selection isn't important because it doesn't really affect your stat but only the skin so if you're someone who is playing the game for like a waifu over meta then i'm sure even the character customization in this game has already been able to satisfy you because the character customization in this game is just very good and even if you're someone who is playing meta the chance of you getting five star weapon in this game is basically i would say a bit easier than in genshin because at this time the soft pity is only 30 and then you're also getting a guaranteed five star at every 80 pool even if you've already got a five star before so basically the pity doesn't reset before 80 so the chance of you getting a five star in this game is really high and i don't even know how many five star character tof is going to be releasing it might not be even as fast as genshin impact would and also the cast of character in tof at the start of the game isn't really that much so the chance of you getting the character you want would be i would say easier however again it's not just come down to the character but most of the time it's the weapon because the character is just the skin so i'm sure as you just play along in the game you're sure to be getting the skin or the weapon type that you really want which is why i really feel that this is a game that we can chill and don't really have to force ourselves to spend just like in genshin impact guys so those are going to be my experience after spending quite some time playing through the game now as i've said i really like tof so far as it does have a lot of potential so i really am looking forward to what its future holds i hope that the tips have been able to help you out and if you really like me to do more tof guides other than genshin impact be sure to let me know down in the comment section and i hope that this video has been helpful to you again guys if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe and i will catch you on my next video